Hey guys, it's great to have you on the channel. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how I do my ARC Troopers from Star Wars Legion. Now, these guys have a lot of white, and I know white is kind of a color a lot of people struggle with, they find it not fun to work with, it is either chalky, a lot of brands of paint, they have a white that's very frustrating in general. So there's actually an easy method that I use for doing white, and I enjoy doing white because of it. Uh, there's a guy out there, Nomad Paintworks, that does an awesome job of this, and somebody you might wanna look at, he has a cool PDF, if you go onto his Facebook, that you can find for an easy way to do white armor. But one of the biggest tricks in doing white normally is don't paint white work with the gray and you can use your whites just kind of as the brightest highlights. With this though, we are kind of going and jumping straight into our whites. This is gonna be a fairly quick paint job. It's gonna be fairly easy. And I've decided to do mine in the 212 colors because I like orange. So without anything else, let's go ahead and jump into the painting. We go ahead and prime these guys in a light gray color. And then what I'm doing here is I'm airbrushing white down on top of the armor panels. And really it's gonna be all over the miniature, but I'm really focusing on the armor panels as a whole. I don't need to worry as much about the weapons or the comma or anything like that, but just simply try to get white on the armor. Now, I'm gonna be doing this from a top-down motion so that I can leave some shadows in the recesses or I can leave some shadows in the darker parts. And we kind of do this gradually in stages so that we don't build up any chalkiness. For the guns, we just take Black Templar, we water it down a little bit and paint it right over top of them. I find this to be the quickest and simplest way to get weapons quickly painted up and then we can use some highlights later to make them stand out and pop a little bit more. For the undersuit, we're gonna be using this dark gray, and what I do is I just put a little bit of flow improver into my paint while I'm doing this, and that way it kind of slides into these recesses a little bit easier and makes it simpler to work with. We don't need super great coverage in these areas because one of the things that we're gonna do later on whenever we put our wash over top is going to help to darken them up even more. For these flatter sections, like the pauldrons, I would definitely go over it a second time, maybe even a third, depending on how thin down the paint is. For the couple of pieces of armor, uh, the chest plate, you've got the greaves on the legs, and for parts of the arm armor, I went with rainy gray, which is this nice kind of brownish gray because I wanted to break it up, but I wanted a color that wasn't just gonna be a gray, that was gonna have a little bit more color variation to it to make it, it stand out from the white and the blacks and grays of the rest of this model. The orange I'm using is a darker burnt orange, 
And we're gonna kind of build up from this base color rather than just having a separate layer paint that goes on top of it later. But I really like this color of orange. I don't really care for like a bright safety orange, but instead using a much darker one that kind of even runs into your reds at times. The biggest thing when doing these markings is just to take your time and be very careful because we already have the white armor kind of where we want it. And if we start making mistakes and getting this all over the white, then we're gonna have to go back and fix that with the brush. And it won't be quite as smooth as it would be with the airbrush, although that's fine. You can definitely do it with just a brush, but we don't wanna undo any of the work that we've already done here. When painting over these darker areas, such as on the pauldrons or anywhere else that you may have already put gray, it's gonna take a couple more layers because we want it to be smooth, so we're gonna thin them down quite a bit. But just expect that if you only do one layer, it's gonna look pretty bad, it's gonna look pretty dark. You want it dark and you don't want it that dark. So for the washing, here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this 50-50 mix and we're gonna paint it all over the entire model. But the biggest thing is after we put it on a section, we're gonna wash off our brush and with a damp brush, we're gonna come back over these places that we really want to be brightest. We want to leave that white shining through without the staining or the shadows. And we just wipe that wash off of those areas. Now, one thing you have to watch out for with this is any pooling, because as you wipe off some of that paint, you don't want to make it pool really bad in some areas, and it can look pretty bad. So just as you go throughout the model, keep coming back to areas that you've already done, and make sure that you're wiping up any pooling that's going on there. This will add a lot of definition. It will keep our armor looking white and we'll even build in some natural highlights as we wipe off those higher spots, those parts that we want to be brighter. And it really makes the armor look good, makes it pop, but also make sure you do this after you've painted on all your markings and the undersuit, because that way you kind of tie the whole model in together rather than just doing the white. And then you've got a bunch of flat looking markings or other parts of the suit and armor that just don't look like they have the same definition. For highlights, we're just gonna come back over with that rainy gray and we're gonna brighten back up just kind of the edges or the more exposed parts, the parts that we want the light hitting. It's not necessarily an edge highlight because we are gonna brighten up some of the different parts of these panels, some of the different parts of the armor that we think should be brighter, but we do wanna focus on the edges and giving them a little bit more definition. Essentially, we're gonna use the same technique for every part of the model as we highlight it up. There's not gonna be a whole lot of difference in what we do as a whole. It's gonna be the same thing, just with different colors. You can see here, I start by doing edging, and then I kind of fill it in a little bit more with where I want that color to be and where I want the brightness to kind of shine through. So make sure you mix it up. Don't just simply do edge highlights because it's gonna make it look very flat. Unless of course that's the style you're going for.
With the gun here, we're just taking our gray and we're really hitting these ridges and the highest parts, just giving it some definition, helping it look a little bit more metallic, but we don't want it looking like a gunmetal, as that's not really the style that Star Wars has or that I really want for these miniatures to have. When doing the comma and the pauldrons, make sure that we have a thin down paint and we're gonna build this up in layers by adding some rainy gray into our eclipse gray and we're gonna build it up slowly and then finally we'll finish it off with using some rainy gray as a final edge highlight on the pauldrons and then just hitting the brightest ridges on the comma to build that transition up. If we jumped straight into rainy gray, you'd have a big jump and it wouldn't look nearly as smooth or nearly as natural, which is what we really want to get here on these large surfaces that have ridges or have these slight edges. For the white armor, we're just gonna take that pure bolt titanium white by Pro Acryl and we're coming back over just the edges. We're looking for the brightest spots where we really want that armor to come through and to shine. We don't wanna paint it all over. We just wanna simply highlight certain areas and really reintegrate some of that white into the brightest parts. You can see here on the backpack that we're really focusing on just the edges and just the raised parts. We're not gonna add any definition to any of the flat areas. We're just simply going for the brightest edges and these brightest uh, buttons or ridges or parts that are kind of raised up off of it. So there you have it. That's how I painted my clones, my stormtroopers. That's how I do my white armor. Hopefully that's helpful for some of you that have maybe had that block with how do I go about doing white. Maybe you don't have an airbrush and so you're thinking, well, I can't use this technique. You definitely can still use this technique. You can use it with a brush. If you're good at dry brushing, you can use dry brushing. You can use a rattle can and spray it from on top. You just have to be extremely careful in how you go about doing that. The most important thing is really the wash and making sure that you're getting that right, making sure that you're taking your time and it's a pretty quick process, but just make sure that you're paying attention to details, you're paying attention to any streaking or to any pooling that might be going on, that you're cleaning off those brightest spots in order to create that contrast between the shadows and between the highest, brightest parts. I really hope this was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna be looking at painting more Star Wars Legion going forward. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought. Let me know what you guys would like to see the next unit, the next models that you would like to see from Star Wars Legion painted. As always, it's been fun and I'll catch you guys next time.